Okay, we're going to paint elephants today. This is our reference, Pixar, Pixabay reference. Got two elephants, and we're going to paint these pretty loosely, I think. Um, and lots of texture in this, in the lights, and maybe drop in some colours that aren't actually in the reference in there. Okay, but let's do our drawing. I'm going to do them pretty much this size. I've actually had one aborted go at the drawing. I made the head far too big, so I'm going to try and not do that this time. Let's do roughly. I think the roughly the height was fine. I just made this head. So down to the tusks is here. Now, if you're coming to this from the website, there'll be a reference of this on there with a grid and that'll be much easier easier to work with okay so this is where the tusk bit comes in and the trunk comes down Shadow curve. These bumps are almost on a straight vertical line. Right. Let me just take a few of those out. I have to say, I've never painted or indeed drawn elephants before, so... I have no idea how this will turn out. This is kind of a fact-finding mission. So this is where the tusk is. This will be where the other bit of tusk will be. Here, this trunk narrows down a little bit, not hugely actually. And here, the foot comes out. How's that? Is that better? I'm hoping that's better. This tusk in whilst we're here. Oops. Just narrow out a little bit. Okay. Now this eye, you see a little bit of eyelid there. This comes across. Big eyelids and the eye itself is kind of small in there. It should come up like that. It does. It's a bit better. I wonder if this came out too far. There's that. I think, I think we're looking okay with that. Let's put in the ear. This ear finishes around there. Side of the face. The leg comes out. So, how does that? Does that look elephant-like? I think it does, actually. Oh. Oh. My leg might be slightly too thin. Although, if you look at elephants walking on television, their legs are pretty thin. Okay. This one comes up. Yeah. 
Yes, I mean, this isn't a perfectly accurate drawing, but I, mean, I think it's okay. Runs to the back of him. Comes down to here. Okay, I like that we have, a, we have an anatomically correct elephant in here, which is good. And this other foot. Is here. Where I can, I'm always judging where things are in relation to something else. There we go. That's about that. Oh, I think that's, that's kind of nice. I quite like that. Would you believe that was an elephant? I think I would. I wonder if his bottom's too... Make his bottom slightly smaller. Yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm not a big elephant. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. That's certain choppiness, which I like. Let's have a look at this foot. Turn the toenails in. There's a few, I can just about see a couple on you. One thing we don't have on this is a shadow. The light's coming, so the shadow will be over there. I think if we're going to put in a shadow. And good. Nice. Right, let's do the other one. We'll shift him under over a bit, but anyway, he's there now. Let's do this one. And now we've got one in, I can do a lot of these measurements in relation to the first one. Okay, let's put in the top head. The feet. Okay. Can we get this width? This ear, right. It's down to the eye. Good. Doing two things here. I'm looking at this angle in relation to the vertical. I'm also looking at this point. Where is it hitting? Hitting my other elephant. This one comes up to that one. Okay. Done that little bit. I'm going to come back. Get this bit. Now, this point of this here is just slightly below. Put that in. And the widest bit where these tusks are. It's actually at the same point on both. Put that in. Okay. And this wide bit is kind of here. And the trunk comes, comes in where the eyes are. This would be the easier one to draw. It's actually harder. Maybe I'm just getting blasé. It's possible. Comes up here.
slightly wrong. I'm learning an awful lot about elephants right now. Without this one comes out. Comes around a little bit and it finishes slightly above that one, so they're slightly asymmetric, which is always good. Okay, looking kind of weird. But... Side of its leg, the truck. Yeah. So I'm just going on angles with an observation here. Look at in here, the gap is actually smaller. Now, it's kind of elephant like this. It's not working though, is it? Really? Where is that? Is that Tuffy? Is that Tuffy? I'm wondering if it's I'm slightly bigger. The eye is too high. Do so let's not bring this eye down a bit. Yeah, it's slightly wonky. Can't actually see anything of. Anything of the actual eye of it. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. I think. I mean, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to leave that like that. Put these feet slightly down a little bit. Okay, well, that's what we have. You. Okay, I'm just going to pause this for a little while. I'll take a photo of him. And then we'll start thinking about colours. So yes, if you if you're not practiced in drawing elephants, try them with a grid first because it's that was that was tough. I was kind of getting more into it as I got along, went along, but yeah, that was tough. I'm going to put the camera on pause and probably just stand back and see what it looks. See you in a couple of seconds. Okay, I'm back. I'm fairly happy, I think. The only thing I wish I'd done is just... But anyway, it's the first elephants I've done, so there's going to be some problems. Right, let's look at some colours. I'm going to get some swatch paper out. I need to break into a new piece. And let's have a look. Let's have a look at the colours and let's have a look at the values. And the values are the most important thing. So, 
we have we have very dark shadows so these are going to be very dark the light is coming from over here you can see the, the front, front front of his head is uh whoops, pardon me is the lightest bit and it's slightly slightly more in shadow it's also slightly more in shadow sort of slightly darker towards the bottom as there's less light coming in so there's this value here that one's slightly lighter than that one the kind of mid value and then this very very dark value so let's have a look at this light i'm going to take this one here this one's slightly lighter I'm going to, let's have a look at that one and i'm first going to have a guess as to what value that is uh, i think it's it's around it's probably around a mid value uh, it's obviously not black and it's obviously not white uh, it's somewhere in the middle let's say it's around five i'm going to check the value with my value scale actually that's not bad is it i think mm. that probably gives some bits so this bit or oh, this would be lighter yeah it's around a mid value so we're going to need some kind of mid value brownish color now i'm going to get the color isolator out look at this color i think we can probably guess what this gets it's a brown okay and it's not a very orangey brown in fact let's bring up chroma magic and let's have a look at what this color actually is so i'm just going to flick over to this browser and i'm going to click on the head at that point where we're just looking at oops of course i can't do have a, I can't click on my window I have to have a separate interaction window here we go right there we go okay so what have we got we've got a five it is five wow and that's that's very orangey actually isn't it it doesn't look that orangey let's just click around a bit that's a bit lower that's five or a four in there i'm just clicking around on the front head part of that right hand elephant and so it's a brown okay and brown is a dark orange this is why to the to right hand side these are all orange right i'm going to go to this left hand one on the, on the same bit of the head where it's a bit lighter yeah it's lighter not that much lighter less chroma it's more gray it's pretty it's pretty similar here and there okay right so let's go for a say let's go slightly light let's go for a six brown color now my printout looks different actually let me get that chip out and let's have a look at that so that's five yr five four let me go fetch that Apologies for that. If I'd planned ahead, um, I would have had that ready. But here we go. Right. So this is that card that we just saw on the Chroma Magic screen in real life. And for the photo, it said 64, wasn't it? It's was this colour. Now, uh, there's bits of that in there. My printer, printers will not print exactly no that's too dark how's that looking that's probably closer isn't it which is slightly less chroma it's the same value it's slightly less chroma i think we go for the higher chroma one for, I, I get a bit fed up using lower chroma for everything yeah let's let's mix this one up let's have a nice bright brown elephants we're going to go probably mix slightly lighter than this and oh hang on no it's five maybe that was the right one five six five four so it was this one ah okay sorry i misremembered so it was that one actually that's not bad yeah okay so let's mix up this color and this is what is going to be kind of our base layer for our, for our elements right now How are we going to mix this colour? Well, it's a brown. So I always start with um, the colour on my palette that is closest to the colour I want. 
And so I have burnt sienna, so let's start with burnt sienna and see how close that is. And this is a value 5, it's a mid value, so we want some water in this, but not too much. That will probably be too dark, and also the paint's not flowing. I like the paint to have some fluidity to it. That's probably going to be a little too light. Just a brush bristle in there. There you go. Okay. Right, I think you can see on the palette, and if you look at the chip, it's going to be it's going to be too bright. Well, let's see what the value is like. Okay, right. I think the value is probably okay. About the right value. But it's not the right chroma. So I'm gonna we could do two things here. We could we could put in a bit of black. Uh, actually let's do both and and see what we get. It's, I'm just gonna put in a little bit of black and this will take the brightness out. Now as it's black it will make it slightly darker so I'm gonna counteract that by just adding in just a I'm just dipping my brush in the water. You don't need very much water for this. And that should just bring the value back. So what does this look like? So this is burnt sienna, a little bit of black. Now that's closer, isn't it? In fact, I could probably go just a little further, slightly, maybe slightly. Slightly still too bright. Go to this one. Yeah, now that I think is almost bang on. Now the other way we could do this it might change the colour slightly, but, but this combination generally gives a, a pretty good neutral. It's used burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And that combination is probably what we'll be using for a very dark. So let's let's see. I'm just interested to see what the difference is going to be between the burnt sienna and black and the burnt sienna and ultramarine. So let's try this again. Oh, I've got paint on my chips. Right, a bit of burnt sienna. And, uh, right, and well, it fits fluid, so that's right. And a little bit of ultramarine. Oh, maybe that was too much. Again, the ultramarine will take it down in value a little bit, so we may need to bring it back just a little bit. Of water, so let's try it here. Right, so that's too light. So I have too much water, so I'm going to add in a bit more pigment, both pigments. Well, yeah. I don't think that's. I can't. I can't see that much difference, to be honest. A little bit more blue. Okay. So let's stick with. Burnt sienna and ultramarine. Even though we can get kind of we can get the same the same position with burnt sienna and black. Uh, but let's use burnt sienna and ultramarine. So burnt sienna and ultramarine also has the advantage that if we want to make something slightly bluer, we can just for a bit more ultramarine. If we want to make it slightly browner, we can add in a bit more burnt sienna. So it gives us some, a little bit of hue variation, which can be more interesting in a painting. Right. Okay. So let's go with this. Ready to slop some paint on. Now, I'm going to paint pretty much through everything. I'm going to go through the lines. I might try and avoid the tusks, but apart from that, there isn't anything that's very light here. The tops of the heads may make slightly lighter. And as we paint through the lines, I'm also going to make that slightly lighter as we go through the lines. Right, so my burnt sienna, my ultramarine. And we're going to slop some water on. We may drop in other colours. That's going to be a little too light. It's going to be too bright. I'm going to bring my swatch paper back just to check. It's going to be too bright. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to have another brush ready. Clean, damp brush to do some softening. Oh, my brush jar seems to have migrated. Here we go. And this is, so this is what I'm going to paint with. This is an Escoda Reserva 
um, round size 12, I think. And I'm going to do my softening with um, a silver black velvet, either squirrel, I think, uh, size 14. Uh, these aren't the cheapest of brushes, but they're, they're pretty nice, actually. If you're looking for a, a, a sable-like brush without the sable price, um, they're pretty good. Right, let's, okay, let's start with the left-hand one since I'm right-handed. Let's slop some, slop some colour on, just avoid the tusks. Just slight bits where it's lighter here and there. Right. And I'm going to get a softening brush. I'm going to soften all these edges and let this paint go where it wants. It means our colour will end up lighter than we originally mixed it. Oh, this brush is not clean. It's got green on it. It's leftovers from the lemons. Oh well, I, want, we, I did say we were going to put extra colours in here, so here we go. Thank you, sir. Okay, this is another knot. Everything's got green on it. I must have cleared up <laughs> in a rush yesterday. <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> very good about it. Keeping my brushes nice and tidy and <laughs> and clean and but apparently not not yesterday. <laughs> right, let's stick. Just gonna drop a bit more. It's gone a lot lighter than we need it to be, which is fine. Which means we can play with it. I'm gonna go through the line. It's gonna look messy. I mean, it looks nothing like an elephant. We're not trying to make it look like an elephant at this point. What we're aiming to do is put some colour down and make the colours interesting. Try and avoid those tusks. All right, and I'm going to get my spray bottle. It might be a little too wet to put some texture in that. And maybe some splatter. Well, if we want to, we could put in some. Just mix up and and mix it with the same ones, but with a little bit more. Not Sierra and ultramarine, but a little bit more ultramarine. And just splatter on some. Just keeping away from areas where I know it's going to be lighter. This is going to dry back pretty light. Okay. Just don't want any hard edges in there. So I'm just going to leave that a little bit, a little bit of dark in there. It's checking its light where I want it to be light, and I'm just touching it up a little bit. These places where it definitely is darker, I'm just adding in a little bit more dark paint. Okay. Now, I was going to put in extra colours, but I kind of like that. And then you can start splattering in all sorts of things. If you look at the, you know, a bit of purple, maybe a bit of red, you could do that. Uh, you could go nuts here. The only thing you have to worry about is just don't make it, start making it too dark. If it's pretty much the same value, you can go nuts with the colours. As soon as you start going darker, you end up with some kind of patchwork mottled elephant, which is not what we want. Right, let's do this other one. And it's exactly the same kind of thing. 
Third Sienna. A little bit of ultramarine. It's going to need a bit more water, that. Oops. That's far too much water. Oh, no, that's not so bad. Okay. Again, nice clean brush. Clean. <laughs> Don't be like me. And try and keep away roughly from the tusks. I might need a bit of gouache on these tusks. I might not. Uh, we're going to go very dark around here, so maybe okay. Right, uh, let's slot on in colour. Gonna go through the edges. Ears. And then come back with my damp brush and soften up all these edges. I don't want hard edges. Not from these two hard edges around these tusks are fine. Oh, it's very hot in here. This paper is drying almost immediately. quite a lot of water on here so this original value is diluting quite a lot and yeah remember what i said about the tusks don't do as i do as i say oh there was a white bit in there oh, never mind oh that's gone Find these these edge pieces. If I don't keep those soft, I think I want to join these two together somehow. We'll do that in a minute. All right, a little bit of a spray. And I have to say at this point, I have no idea if this is going to work out. If you're watching this, it obviously worked out. But I'm <laughs> you have more knowledge than I do at this point. Right, let's put in just a slight, this slightly bluer grey just here and there. I'm just looking where the, oops, that's not blue at all, is it? It's better. It's a few pieces. A splatter, I think. It's a drip. It's coming. Something I want to do. Lift a little bit of this. Like this, just kind of just kind of drawing these two together. Looking a little too separate for me. A lot of water going down in here. Okay. Now, 
from my experience and I know that even though this looks like a dog's breakfast that's fine I'm just going to put a spray in my texture here we're fine and it should work out but what we do need to do is let it dry so I'm going to put a camera on pause and let it dry and then we'll come back and start putting in some shadows and when we put in the shadows it should start coming to light so fingers crossed that will happen okay just going to pause this okay and i'm back and i know i said i was going to wait until this is dry to do the next layer i've decided not to i think i might if, if it bleeds a little bit i think i might quite like that so i'm going to work into it now i'm going to put these very dark shadows on so i'm just squinting at this left hand one to see where the darks are i'm wondering whether i should start with this one actually yeah, I'm going to start with this one because this this one has got these very dark shadows on this left hand side. I want to, I want to see if they work. To be honest. So again, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Not too much water this time because we want this to be dark. I'm going to add in a slightly more slightly more blue. And I'm trying to leave my softening brush as well. Right, let's start. Start where this tusk let's start here. I'm just looking at this big dark shadow. I'm putting on colour when I just see that big dark. around that tusk and once that's down I'm going to get a softening brush it's a, nice, it's a slightly smaller brush than before I'm just going to soften the edges around it I want this shadow just to fade out slightly and I'm hoping the shape of this elephant it is so recognisable. I won't need to do too much to it. Now, I'm not going to put any of these little detailed shadows in. I'll just put a bit down here. A bit of shadow on that tusk, but that's actually a completely different colour, so I'm, I'm going to ignore that, see how this works. And that comes down to its leg, like here. How does that look? I think you can start to see a bit of elephantness come in here. Maybe I'm just going to drag a bit of this colour out here and there. Now these have got these little wrinkles on them on these nodes. Just using a damp brush to pull the colour out. No idea if that's. I mean, I'm. I'm this is suit of pants stuff. And that shadow is kind of crisp down there. And pigment from there. Does that look elephant like yet? Yeah, not really, does it? But uh, I don't think it will. 
Right, let's put the other side of this trunk in. This is kind of shadow that task. I'm going to leave that just for now. Go. Uh, we're only really working with two values here. Our light value and our very dark value. There's some mid values in the middle. It's kind of Might have been a mistake to put those in too early. Right, what have we got? A little bit of weeding down here. Where's that? Perhaps a little bit more shadow in there. Trying to see what are the key dark pieces that will bring this to life. Actually, a little bit of shadow around that tusk, I think, was one of them. Yeah. I know I said I was going to do this whilst this was wet. This is obviously dry. All right, other darks that need to go in. So I'll put in a bit more shadow here. And I'm not really I'm not really looking at this as an elephant. I'm looking at this as a pattern of light and dark that hopefully will read as elephants. I should turn my notifications off. Oh, this bit in here. Now this is the bit that I thought was going to be tricky, and I think it is. Keeping hard edges that I want to keep hard, hard and soft edges, soft. How's that looking? I don't know. I think I need. right hand side we want a little bit of dark around this eye let's make it read as an eye now the darkest bit is right in the eyeball so let's put that in and actually this is a little bit of dark in here these are very small but i think they're going to be quite important A little bit of dark in here. And there's this other. Oh, hopefully, my head isn't getting too much in the way. Just gonna put the comes down. Just a little bit around the eye. Yeah, I don't want it to be hard edged, which is quite a lot of it. 
Although often one side of the shadow will be hard, and one will be soft. And the underneath is Here, I can't quite see how this is going. It could be a triumph, or it could be an absolute disaster, and I can't. It's a struggle, but then all things can sort of struggle. Right now, there's a very hard shadow. Just behind this tusk. Just where that ear shaded is shading the body. Just gonna put a little bit of colour inside of this ear too. I'm trying to define things, just a little bit of value change, but still keeping the main lights and darks. Right, I think I'm going to have to put a little bit of shadow here. squinting almost continuously with this as well. Right, I'm going to stand back and see what that looks like. See if we've got anything. Is anything an elephant? Oh, I think, I think we've got something. There's something coming. I think there is something coming. See, I get all excited now. It's a very difficult time, this, because I get all excited and I think it's going to work, and then if I lose it, I get very sad. It's a little bit of kind of across the edge of this ear. Just want to define the edge of this ear, and then this is my softening brush, just softening all those edges. And I, I really go into the actual paint when I'm softening. Um, it's more case of wetting the paper next door to the paint and just letting the paint flow into that wet paper. All right, let's put something down here. Now these feet bits, I think I'm, I'm only, I mean there's this detail we can put on there but I don't know how much actually we'll need to do. All right, let's, let's put some darks with his knee. Placing paint right where it's darkest down here, and now my, my damp softening brush is coming in, it's wetting the paper next to it, I'm softening that edge now. If it does need a bit more, which it does, I'm squinting a lot here. Just dab a bit of colour. It's kind of dark down here, isn't it? I'm leaving the edges hard on the outside and then softening them on the inside. That paint had dried a little too much there. So I think I'm going to need a bit. We did say it was darker down here, didn't we? I think it needs a bit more oomph down there. Okay. Right, 
So we'll bring the shadow down a bit further to define that point. Okay, now I'm going to have to put a wash over this edit. This, this tusk isn't showing up at all, which I think we need a lot of washes here and there. Okay. Put a bit more blue into this. Okay, now, right, I'm going to stand back again. Okay, I don't like him. I don't like him. All right. Now this one, this, this has got, I'm going to put a wash over the the body I think because this is light but most of this is a lot darker well certainly darker probably what I should have done over here but I didn't <clears throat> so I'm going to do that right now I need a bit more burnt sienna in that wash I think I don't want to take it too much darker but I do want it slightly darker And top, the light is on the top, is back, so I'm going to leave that a little bit in there. You kind of learn as you go along, I guess. I probably should have done this in three main values, this under this light value. A, a more of a mid value and then the very dark value but I wasn't it's one of those things you learn as you go along oops what we left was trunk this trunk is actually kind of dark down here so. Yeah. Okay. around here. Okay, that's going to be very dark, so I don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so while I'm here, let's put a bit of colour on this blank. What I want this on here for is to bring out this tusk, which I would bring out if I wasn't painting right over it. Uh, 
that's better. And again, soften my edges. Well, I don't want hard edges. Just that little slight value change there. A little slight value change made a big difference. Okay. How's that? It's a blue splotch here, which I didn't really want, but it's there now, so there we are. still pretty loose as you can see that the shape of the elephant is there yeah, i'm thinking i need a few more dark okay I'm, I'm feeling i'm feeling good i don't i was gonna say i'm feeling in control i'm not sure that's ever the case but um i'm feeling as though it's not a disaster does that still work Okay, I think we're okay. I'm going to put the, these, the equivalent of these dark shadows on this left-hand elephant. And again, as little as I can get away with, just enough to show the form and that it reads as elephant. I can see why people paint elephants. As I said, I've never painted one before, so... It's a voyage of discovery. They are kind of fun. They've got nice shapes to them. Ears and these little tusk pieces. I like that a lot. Right, okay, so where should we start? I'm going to start, if this is dry enough, I hope it is. Again, I'm going to start around this tusk. Put a dab on. Yes, it's dry enough. Just a it's a clean damp brush. I need little bits of paper. I don't colour in Where it's dark, and a little bit of paper, and then use the clean damp brush to dampen the paper and let the paint flow. And it just gives a slight value variation. It was more convincing. Um, so I'm, I'm concentrating on trying to talk, and it's obviously not working, is it? It's more convincing than, than just a block of colour. Let's put these in down here. Doing the same, I'm putting the paint down <clears throat> where I can see that it's the darkest. Little, little gaps and the softening brush joins them together. This is going to need a little bit of dark down here. To show that that. Leg is there. A little bit from the undercarriage. Uh, 
Let's go back, click punch. Okay, we're being careful, that should be a fairly hard edge. This one. The rest of them can be quite soft. This here, this is kind of tricky. Let's come up here. It's soft, there's a little bit of dark here. Right, the edge. Placing little pieces of paint where I can see that they're darkest, then using my damp brush. Soften the edges and sometimes you pull it out into areas where I want it to be. This one's trickier. I don't know if this one's going to work very well. Is there. Right, let's try and get this face working. This is going to be. I'm actually going to put on a slight wash just on the lower half of his face, which is slightly darker. This is dark down here, this trunk is very dark. It's very dark in there. thinking whoops soften this bit right now let's do some softening over here stand back and take a look. We need some darks on here to define the eyes, just little bits, and I'm hoping that will pull it all together, but oh, who knows. It's just a little bit here. His nose is too wide. Mm, it's dark. A mixture of that's yeah. And uh, ultramarine. Sorry, my my <laughs> it wasn't functioning then. Some extra darks in here.
Let's try this eye again. It's darkest. Actual eyeball. Brushed it front a bit. wrestling with this elephant and I thought I had the elephants cracked but I obviously didn't. And let's just put a bit of darks on these ears. I'll just define this other side of the face. Just a slight little bit the other side of the tusk. Brush off of it. If it goes on that's a little too dark, I'm just gonna use my smoothing brush to destroy them a little bit. thinking I might I might call this a day a little bit I might call this a day I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking I can't do any more I'm not actually going to add anything this eye to actually be there though. It's not quite there yet. My brush is not pointing enough. Just 
It's so dark, so I feel I haven't quite got the values right on this left hand elephant. And the, I know there's shading on these tasks, I think I'm actually going to leave that. I'm just going to stand back and see what it looks like. I think. I think I'm pretty much done. I will just put a little shadow here. This to be too... Too dark. A little shadow here. Okay, right. I think I think I'm going to call that a day. I'm fairly, I'm fit as a first girl, I'm fairly happy with it, I think. Um, it's one thing, of course, there's always just one thing. I think there's probably going to be a lot of things. I want that ear to be slightly fatter. shading on this head. Very, very slight value changes here. Okay, leave that now. Okay, well that was that was kind of a struggle. Good though, enjoyable, enjoyable. There's, I'm sure there's things I will wake up tomorrow morning and want to change. But I kind of, I kind of like them, and I like the looseness. I like this, this where they all kind of mush into the background and the shadows really define them. So yeah, it was fun, stressful. Definitely, but fun. Yeah, I'll just put them on Zoom so you can see them. There we go. Yeah. I think they're kind of nice. I like them a lot. Okay, great. Elephants, I hope you enjoyed that. And please, if you try it, um, drop me a line. Or, uh, yeah, Facebook or on the website. I'd love to see what you do. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see anything again, I will be around uh, soon, I should think. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.